Welcome to Math CRT Bootcamp Spring 2014 Day 1. In this lesson, you are going to be reviewing some of the long-term reviews, and you are also going to be covering about something you don't know before. This is what you're going to be covering. Long-term review. Now, if I give you an equation such as this one, 7x over 9 plus x over 2 minus 17 over 9 equals 2 over 3. To solve this equation, you would have to first add both sides by 17 ninths and then maybe use the, the inverse operation toward x over 2, which is to multiply by 2 for both sides, and then use the in, uh, re, re, reciprocals to solve the equation. Well, but now you're going to learn about, you're actually going to be revealing about a method that is similar to that, which of course is called clearing the fractions. To clear the fractions, you just need to get the denominator it's the same. So I get 7x over 9's denominator 18, which is a least common multiple of both 2, 9, and 3. So after I got them, I cleared them. And I got a regular equation over here, and I solved randomly. If the equation just gives you the same denominator, then great. You can just clear them and solve normally. That's how you do it. Well, another method similar is also part of clearing the fractions. You just take your equation and multiply both sides by the by the least common multiple of both denominators of all denominators and then solve normally. Clearing the decimals, they are basically like the same method. You need to count the greatest number of decimal places in any of the terms. Now in this example, the greatest decimal places is 2. So you multiply each side of the equation by 10 squared or 100. And then you solve normally and you don't have any decimals to worry about. That's how you do it. That's a long term review. Now we are going to learning about our new lesson. This lesson is called the area of a circle and a cylinder. You haven't covered that before, but you probably heard about it. So now, before we get started, let's study this paper. Study this paper. So the area of a cylinder, which is the formula, would be V equals pi r squared times high, where pi is always equal to 3.14. r squared is a radius, or the line extending from the center point of the base, any base, toward the outside edge. The height is the distance of the height of the cylinder. Extending from the center point, well, not really like the center point, but... This is a formula for a cylinder, and the formula for a um, circle is V equals pi r squared. That's how you, f how you find the area of a cylinder and the volume of a, no, the volume of a cylinder and the area of a circle. So we are going to be watching a video to deepen your understanding about the volumes and the area. we find the formula for the area of a circle. To find this formula, we want to take a circle and cut it up into pieces or slices, just like this. To do that, we want to draw a bunch of diameters in our circle. Remember, a diameter is a line that cuts through the circle and goes through the center point. So we want to draw a bunch of these diameters to make all of these slices. Now we want to take this sliced up circle and we want to actually turn it into a parallelogram. That will help us find the formula for the area of a circle. To turn this into a parallelogram, we need to take this circle and cut it in half at one of the diameters. So let's choose this diameter right here. 
we want to cut along the diameter, and then we break the circle up into two pieces. We have the upper piece of our circle and the lower piece of our circle. Then take each one of these pieces and lay them out flat. To do that, we want to take this curve, the bottom curve of our circle, and flatten it out, just like that. And we want to do the same thing with the upper curve. We want to take it from a curve and lay it out flat. So when we take this upper curve and lay it out flat, we get this line here. Then when we take our bottom curve and lay that out flat, we get this curve here. Now when we do that, each of these slices fans out. And the upper slices and the lower slices will link together just like this. And now look, we have a parallelogram from our circle. Great! Now let's go through this parallelogram and label some pieces that came from the circle. Well again, this is the bottom half. And this curve is actually half of the circumference. Because the circumference is the distance around the total circle, and we just cut it in half, that means this bottom curve is half of the circumference. And this bottom curve became this line down here. Which means that the length of this line is one half of the circumference of our circle. Now each one of these spokes is a radius. So here, this will be our radius, the length from the top to the bottom of this parallelogram. Great! Now we have a parallelogram from our circle. Now the area of our circle is approximately equal to the area of the parallelogram we made. So let's take the formula for the area of a parallelogram and see if we can find the formula for the area of a circle. The area of a parallelogram is A equals B times H, base times height. Well, what's the base and the height of our parallelogram? The base is the length of this line here. So, the base of our parallelogram is the same as one half of the circumference of our circle. Now, what about the height? The height is from the top to the bottom, this length here, which is the same as the radius of our circle. So now the height is the same as the radius, and the base is the same as one half the circumference. Let's take those values that we have from our circle and plug them into our formula for the area of a parallelogram. So we have that the area is equal to the base, which is one half of the circumference of our circle, times h, our height, which is the same as the radius of our circle. Now, the circumference. That is the distance around the circle. And there's two formulas that we can use to find the circumference. We have c equals pi times d, and c equals 2 pi r. In this problem, we're already working with a radius. So let's pick this formula. Let's take this formula and plug in this value in for our circumference. So we have 1 half times the circumference, which is the same as 2 pi r. And we're still multiplying this radius on the end. Now let's simplify. We have 2 pi over 2 times r, and then we're multiplying r. Well, these 2's cancel each other out, and we're left with pi times r times r, which we can rewrite as pi r squared. So that means that the area is equal to pi r squared. Hey! We now have the formula for the area of a circle. The area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. Now that we've derived this formula, let's use it to find the area of this circle. This circle has a radius of 6 centimeters and a diameter of 12. Let's see. Area equals pi r squared. Let's use the decimal approximation of 3.14 to be pi. r is our radius, which in this problem measures 6 centimeters. So we're taking 6 and squaring it. Well, if we take 6 squared, we get 36. Now if we take 3.14 times 36, we get 113.04. Now we have the area. But remember, area is measured in square units. So we need to take the units we're working with and square them. We're working with centimeters, since our radius and our diameter are both measured in centimeters. And 
Area is a squared measurement, so we need to have centimeters squared in our answer. That means that the area of the circle we're working with is 113.04 centimeters squared. And now we have the formula for the area of a circle. Area is equal to pi times the radius squared. Now is a video of the volume of a cylinder. Let's find the volume of this cylinder. To find the volume of a cylinder, it would be a really good idea to start out by writing down the formula for the volume of a cylinder. Without this formula, it would be pretty difficult to find the volume of the cylinder. So let's see that formula. We have that the volume of the cylinder is equal to the area of the base times the height. Here B is the area of the base of our cylinder, and H is the height of our cylinder. Now let's take a look at that base. In a cylinder, the base is a circle. We have one base here and another base here. Now each of these circles has the same area. And the area of a circle is pi r squared. That means that the area of the base, or the area of the circle, is the same as pi r squared. So in our formula, instead of writing b, we could write pi r squared, the area of a circle. So now we have that the volume of our cylinder is equal to pi r squared times h. r is the radius of our circle, and h is the height of our cylinder. Great! We now have a formula that we can use to help us find the volume. In step number two, let's look at our cylinder and see if we can identify some of these variables. Let's see, v again is the volume of the cylinder. Well, that's what we're trying to find, so we don't know what that is yet. Here's r, the radius of the circle. Remember, the circle is the base of the cylinder, and the radius is this length right here, which is six inches. So in this problem, r, the radius, is equal to six inches. Now h. h is the height of the cylinder. The height is the distance between the two bases. So it would be the measurement from this base to the other base. The measurement of that distance is right here, 9 inches. So the height of our cylinder is 9 inches. Now what about this? This is pi, an irrational number. And in order to find the volume of this cylinder, we can take pi and approximate it as the decimal 3.14. Perfect. Now that we've identified these variables, let's take them and plug them in to our formula. So we have that the volume of our cylinder is equal to pi, which is 3.14, times r squared, the radius squared, which in this problem would be 6 squared, times h, the height, which is 9. So now all we need to do to find the volume of this cylinder is solve this equation. To solve this equation, we want to simplify this right-hand side using the order of operations. If so that's the end of the CRT boot camp. Started to try to solve that expression.